Hi, my name is Hamin John. I'm here to present fluorescence lifetime imaging microscopy. Review this flame. So let's first discuss with what fluorescence means. When light with certain energy, which can be defined as h nu, where h is a constant named Planck constant and v nu is the frequency of light, interact with an atom, the atom can observe the energy and get excited. When this happens, electrons in the atom jump to higher energy states and stay there for some time. Switching to a different diagram, where S0 represents the ground energy state the electrons are initially in, after light of energy H0 hits the atom, move to the excited state S1, and after moving to the excited level, electrons can relax through different pathways, one of which is to dissipate energy as heat. When this occurs, the electrons move down to relax relaxed excited state and eventually go back down after emitting an energy of H nu, where nu is lower in the beginning. Now I'm going to discuss fluorescence, decay, and lifetime. As you can imagine, the fluorescence will eventually decay over time, which is described by an equation. It equals I naught times e to the negative t over tau power, where it represents the fluorescence intensity at time t, I naught represents the initial fluorescence intensity, and t represents time, and tau represents uh, fluorescence time, like fluorescence lifetime. As I explained earlier, fluorescence lifetime is defined as the amount of time an electron excited atom stays in an excited level before emitting a photon. And as it can be seen in the equation, directly determines the decay rate of fluorescence. Depending on the material, fluorescence lifetime can vary, which leads to different fluorescence decay rate. And flame essentially uses this difference in fluorescence decay to create an image by assigning intensity values that are different by the fluorescence lifetime to each pixel at different locations of the sample. Now, let's talk about the flame setup. First, flame requires a light source, which can be a pulse laser. Um, and this laser pulse can basically travel through a dichroic mirror, which can later filter out the excitation light and let the fluorescent signal pass through. The light then goes through an objective, which functions to focus the excitation light onto the sample, which is placed on a scanning stage, which is two-dimensional here in this picture. And after the excitation light hits the sample, light is emitted from the sample, which then gets collected by the objective, and the signal then travels past the dichroic mirror and is detected by a single photon sensitive detector, which is then connected to a time-correlated single photon counting unit, which is abbreviated as TC-SPC. And this unit is used later to calculate the fluorescence lifetime based on the time between the sample excitation by pulse laser and arrival of the signal at its detector. And by recording arrival times of many photons, a decay curve can be derived based on the fluorescence lifetime measurement. Now let's discuss some applications of the flame technique. First, as many environmental factors affect fluorescence lifetime, flame can be used to detect those factors. And these factors include pH, oxygen, and calcium ion concentration. Next, the lifetime can also change due to molecular interaction between proteins approaching each other and transferring energy from one to another. Specifically, the proteins are each dyed with fluorophores of different spectra, where emission spectrum of one overlap with the excitation spectrum of another. And in this diagram, I represents intensity and lambda represents wavelengths. This way, when the proteins are close to each other at a distance of only a few nanometers away, and if light is applied to one protein, which is called donor protein, the donor protein can later transfer its energy to the other protein, which is called acceptor protein. And when this happens, the lifetime of the donor protein then decreases. Thus, based on this lifetime change, the protein interaction can be studied, and this is called fluorescence, resonance, energy transfer, or threat analysis. So that wraps up my presentation, and thank you very much for watching.